Hi guys, I'm Rival. Welcome to a new tutorial series. Today we are starting how to answer common interview questions. So just a little bit of a warning here. I don't want you to watch these videos, go into an interview and then recite them word for word or just dropping keywords or buzzwords to impress the interviewer. If you don't understand how to do something that I mentioned in this tutorial, it should be in your best interest to go and research it a little bit further so you have a good understanding of what I'm talking about. In these videos, I'm going to be explaining how to answer these questions, but I'm not going to explain how to do the things we are talking about. So there's not going to be any coding examples or stuff like that. So it'll be up to you just to do that little bit of extra research if you don't understand something. With that said, let's get into the first question, and that is how to optimize page load. Now, this is a very common question, and it's asked in many interviews. So let's get into it. Get rid of that. Now, this question, as you can imagine, is very open-ended. Okay, open-ended. There's many answers that you can actually give for this. Okay, so many answers. Now, just because there's many answers, it doesn't mean there's no wrong answer. There are wrong answers to this question, but there's also a lot of correct answers. So, so in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a lot of detail on how you can actually answer this question. And in the end, I'm just going to give you the highlights. Okay, so obviously this question, like I said, is open-ended, but why is it open-ended? So when someone asks you this question, they want to find out obviously your knowledge of web development. So it's also a little bit of a problem solving question. Now the way I answer this question is I create a scenario for myself. So scenario. So I create this scenario and then I start to pick apart the scenario. So what I demonstrate is my problem solving skills and how I would approach a problem. So let's find out how I would approach it. So let's get rid of that. Okay, so first of all, I'll pick picture an imaginary website. Okay, so I have this imaginary website here. So here's a web page. Okay, so great. So I have this web page, and then I start to say, well, okay, we have this web page. Now, the first thing I want to do is actually benchmark to see how long the page is taking to load. Okay, so number one, benchmark. Why this is key for page load is because how do you know that your page is actually loaded faster? You have to first benchmark it. Now, there are many tools out there to benchmark. If you're using something like Laravel, Symfony, or even Zend, there are toolbars out there that you can use that are very useful. It shows you how many queries are run, shows you how long it takes to do things. So very useful. And if you don't, you can also use Chrome developer tools. And I think Mozilla is coming up to scratch now. So there's various options that you can use to benchmark how long the page takes to load. Secondly, we're going to open up the code and review it. So review code. So what exactly are you going to be doing when you're reviewing the code? Well, the first thing you're going to be doing is checking if the code is optimized, if it's good code. So you may check for stuff like duplicate code. You may check for stuff like unnecessary code and anything you can optimize really. So that would be code. So number three, database calls. So more often than not, you're gonna have some sort of database calls on your page. And what you can do when reviewing the code or reviewing these database calls is you can check to see is, are the queries optimized? Are they pulling necessary data? Are you using an ORM? A lot of the times with ORMs, people tend to just use the most basic way of querying via the model. And then 
sometimes they bring a whole lot of unnecessary data with it as well. So that can really slow down page load as well. So that's database calls. Next is the most important point really is caching. So what data can we cache? So caching systems like Memcache or Redis, they can help you out with caching data. So when you cache data, getting that data back is much quicker than querying a database or getting it from an external source, such as an API. So caching, very important. Right, so number five, is maybe something not many people know, and um, that is caching assets and zipping assets. So server-side, and when I say server-side, I mean Nginx or Apache on your web server, you do have the option of telling the browser to cache assets. And you also have the option of zipping assets. So you can use something like gzip to zip a jQuery, uh, sorry, a JavaScript file or CSS file, something like that to make it smaller. So when the page loads, stuff like that's much quicker. And lastly, so sorry, this may be a bit small, but web server. Okay, so the web server is pretty much the last resort almost. Um, if your entire website is running slow, not just the specific page, that's, some, that's when you would pr most likely consider changing your web server. Now we know about Apache and Nginx, they are the most common open source web servers out there. And Nginx sometimes has, or more often than not has this reputation of being much quicker than Apache. So it's a, down to you or you know your team to research this, which works better for your website. So whether it's Nginx or Apache, and sometimes you can experience crazy speed boosts. I certainly did when I worked on a project before, we actually swapped our web server from Apache to Nginx. So those are the sort of things you should be considering. So benchmark, review code, review database calls, caching, caching assets and zipping assets and your web server. So those are the important things and that's how you should go about answering this question. You should picture the scenario of a website and you'll say, okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'll benchmark the site just to make sure I have a baseline. Second, I'll review the code and see if there's any duplicate code, is there anything I can do to optimize this code. Next, database calls and so on. So that's how you answer the question. I think that's a very solid answer. Some people may cut you off before it, but if you feel that you're not gonna remember all this or you feel that you're being rushed, you don't have a lot of time to answer questions, the best thing you can do is mention caching, okay? Caching is one of the major things you can do to speed up a page and that's when it's loading a whole bunch of things like let's say going to an external source like an API. Obviously that can be a slow process if you have that cached already, you can serve those that data straight from cache instead of going to that external API. Okay, so thanks for watching, guys. I hope this new series is something that you guys find intriguing. And if, you know, hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you learned. So remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button as well, guys.